Our entire universe was created in the Big Bang 13.8 billion years ago. Everything came from nothing. But our modern universe is a complex mosaic of matter. When we marvel through our telescopes at the fantastic structure of our universe and its galaxies, you gotta ask, where did that come from? Matter in the universe arranges itself on a vast cosmic web. Galaxies and galaxies clusters are strung out on sheets and filaments. It seems this intricate web is organized by a cosmic architect. Space-time. It shaped everything from planets to galaxies, atoms to cities. The universe is made of space-time. Whatever the substance is, time and space bound together, that's expanding and creating the universe we see around us. It's everything. Space-time is what the universe really is. It's a hard concept to grasp, and even harder to visualize. Scientists observe the universe in different wavelengths of light. This is the sun, in visible light, X-ray, and ultraviolet. Now imagine if we could see it in the space-time spectrum. We would see space-time distorting as objects move through it. Space-time can warp and push things around. It can expand and pull things apart. But it's the shape of space-time that dictates how we experience it. Imagine you're in your car. You go up hills and you go down hills. So the shape of Earth's surface determines how you travel across Earth's surface. In the same way, the geometry of space-time determines how light and matter move through space-time. The rules are simple. Matter, in fact, any object, tells space-time how to curve. The curvature of space-time tells matter how to move. Because the shape of space-time tells matter how to move, what we call gravity, this means that gravity and the shape of space-time tells matter how to clump together and form larger and larger structures. But at the beginning, the space-time landscape was very different from today's. And the very first matter started to change the shape of space-time. So this space right here has a, a tiny bit more matter in it than this over here. Wherever there was a little bit of extra mass, that would bend space a little bit more. Well, if you're bending space a little bit more, then more mass would collect there. In the early universe, the denser regions of matter created deeper curves in space-time. And as the mass gets bigger, as stuff falls into that well, it gets deeper and deeper and deeper and attracts more stuff, and it's just a runaway process. Gravity increased, pulling in more and more matter. It got more dense, got more dense, got more dense, and then before you know it, You've got a star, and you've got a bunch of stars, and you start to make a galaxy. And these stars evolved and began forming large structures. They sort of burned through all their nuclear fuel and exploded, and they made all the heavier elements. And with time, we got down to having things like planets, atmospheres, people, all the things that we care about today. All of this started out as energy fluctuations in expanding space-time. These, at first, very tiny fluctuations became these gigantic structures that we actually see today. And over billions of years, that material began to coalesce into individual galaxies, stars, planets, and you. Fluctuations in the expansion of space-time laid out the pattern of the universe. The curvature of space-time controlled the evolution of everything we see today. If space-time didn't have that property of bringing mass together, then all we would be is a thin haze of hydrogen gas, not a very interesting universe at all. If space-time didn't curve because of matter inside of it, the universe would be a really weird place. I mean, uh, there'd be no gravity. There'd be nothing to make things stick together. No force of gravity means no stars, no planets, and no people. 
We owe our existence to space-time. But even scientists struggle to understand it. I wish I knew what space-time is. We know things about space-time, but at the same time, we feel like we know almost nothing about space-time. Believe it or not, space is a material much like this iron sheet. And like this iron, space can distort. If I put a very heavy weight on this sheet of metal, its shape is gonna change and it's gonna distort. Amazingly, space can carry waves, and so can this iron sheet. But to get this sheet waving, you need something really powerful. Something like me and my hammer. Did you see those waves travel through that iron sheet? Well, waves pass through space in exactly the same way. We call these gravitational waves. Gravitational waves are vibrations from cosmic events transmitted through the material of space-time. To set off waves in space, you need the biggest, baddest, most powerful events in the universe, something like the collision of two black holes. When two black holes collide, the energy released sends shock waves through space-time across the universe. By the time they reach Earth, they're so small, they're immeasurable. Almost. In 2015, scientists at the LIGO Observatory made a groundbreaking observation. They detected ripples in space-time, gravitational waves. Rumors began flying, but it became clear after a while that this was indeed the first direct detection of gravitational waves seen by man-made instruments on the Earth. When we discovered gravitational waves, it had been so long that we've been waiting for signals. Not only did most of us not believe it, I went so far as to be so skeptical as to look into all kinds of conspiracy theories for ways it could be fake. When I saw this data, I, I still think back on it now, and the emotional impact it has on me, the only thing comparable is when I saw my daughter's face for the first time after she had been born, it was that kind of an emotional impact, just having all of this thing that we had worked for coming to fruition in one moment. It's mind-blowing. We can actually hear these gravitational waves on Earth. Part of what makes this so amazing, it's a bit of a coincidence, but it's a really cool coincidence, is that the signals that LIGO actually measures are in the same frequency band as the sounds that the human ear is sensitive to. We can hear the waves change frequency as the two black holes get closer and collide. It's a swoop up in frequency that sounds like What we were hearing in that were two black holes that are orbiting around one another and then coming together. That was it. Listening to ripples in space-time has given us a powerful new tool to investigate the universe. We are now hearing things in gravity for the first time. It's a sense that we have never been able to apply to the universe and we're beginning to learn what is out there. The observation of gravitational waves from black holes is one of the most significant findings in astronomy by anyone in the recent 100 years. It's hard to overstate the importance of gravitational wave astronomy. Much like when Galileo first pointed his telescope at the stars to see something new, we now have an entirely new window into the universe. 